Okay, how low can you go? Well, you, you can't go very low. When it comes time to running the, the state, it's a big business. And I, I almost choked when I was listening to the president's remarks this morning about the proposed budget. In the... T- I can't even say it. Trillions of dollars. But it's bad enough that we're in the billions. Many of you can remember when Hawaii uh, was in the millions rather than the billions. And now we're up in the billions. So it's a lot to do with that. And a lot of what the legislature has to do is based around money. We're going to talk about some of that today. But it's also based around what's good for us. Uh, what's good legislatively for us. And we have a lot to talk about. Beth Fukumoto Chang is our guest. She is, of course, minority leader. And uh, uh, I was saying earlier, Beth, there's already enough to do, right? But now there's 10 million more things to do. Do you sometimes <laughs> feel like they're just trying to stack the deck and make more work? <laughs> yes, it's unbelievable, yeah. especially when people put in their own individual bills. Yeah. You know, I want to talk about that a little bit because I do know that there's a lot of people that don't understand why the mayor is asking now for this GET to be extended. Yeah. Uh, because they already know that they're going to get the money through, I think, 2022, right? Right. So right. they're saying, well, what's the panic? Why do they have to have a change right now? And what we've been told, and, and I maybe maybe you can give us some clarification, was because that money is, although it's expected, uh, when you guarantee it by making it a law, that means that you can either borrow against it or use it for leverage. Is that what the mayor is doing right now? He's trying to leverage that 2022 into some other time? You know, he hasn't actually explained that to any of the legislature. Mm-hmm. legislature. Um, I think the governor and a number of other legislators were worried that, you know, we really don't need to do this yet. There are a lot of people that don't feel comfortable extending the GET. So the mayor really, if that's what it is, I would think that's a better argument than he's had. Yeah. Well, the thing that that some are saying, and I don't know how accurate this is, because I think that most of our listeners tend to be knee jerk, you know, as soon as they hear something, they, Oh, that's terrible. Right. Uh, But one thing that I do understand is that the mayor is really asking the city, uh, the, the, the city council to say, look, uh, you got to get behind me. Then we got to go to the legislature. Right. Because the mayor just can't come on his own, right? Well, he could just come on his own. Mm-hmm. Um, and certainly other mayors have come They for things like extending the TAT mm-hmm. or getting more more of the transient accommodations tax. Uh, he comes by himself with that. So mm-hmm. he could come by himself. I think he is trying to spread out the blame. <laughs> yeah. What I, what I am a little bit worried about, I remember back when this idea was conceived. And it did sound like a pretty good idea because, you know, you have a million people on a wall almost and they spend money every day. And if you take a little tiny bit, which they they said was a little tiny bit, it's not, it's a lot. Right. But if you take it, nobody's going to really care. And then they say, well, wasn't this same opportunity extended to the neighbor islands? You talk with a lot of, you know, folks from the neighbor islands. Mm -hmm. It was extended, but nobody took it. Yes. Do you think they're going to? I think that, yeah, there's been some are looking at it. it. Yeah, Yeah. because the counties only have so much taxation power. Sure. And here's this big pot of potential money that they haven't touched yet. But I'm sure at some point it's going to become tempting. What about the TAT? Because we were told that the council of mayors all got together and said, okay, the counties want to keep more of this. or We want more Mm -hmm. of the TAT. Uh, That's a pretty hard pie to divvy up to, it seems. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things our caucus is proposing, one of our caucus bills was to give the counties more for of the TAT, but to link it specifically to infrastructure. So mm-hmm. you they have idea. to spend it on that. Yeah, because isn't it true that if they don't, the state, it, it, it falls back on the state. You know, in other words, if the roads are no good, right. it, you know, it, it, or, or they don't have enough electricity or water, somebody's got to give it to them. Right. And what we're finding now is it's making it really difficult with development. Um, mm-hmm. Some developers just say that's the, it's such a huge cost that it's yeah. increasing the house cr- County's got cost of housing now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so there's no quick dilemma there. I, I do know that I said that, you know, right off the bat, there's a lot of things that we're looking at. Uh, one of them that, that got a fair bit of interest earlier this morning was this whole new new thing on e-cigs. Yes. On, uh, now we're going to look for the same sort of legislation. Uh, was it or is it county by county that makes up their mind what they're doing? That's, or is this something that would be a statewide ban like other things, like like smoking in public places is now? Um, well, so the counties can ban things like like uh, Honolulu County banned smoking on beaches, right, right. in city parks. Yeah. So they could do stuff like that. They could. I don't see why they couldn't ban e-cigarettes in city parks. So like specific. Yeah. 
But an overall ban, I think, is going to have to come from the legislature, specifically yeah. if it's a statewide ban. I remember back when we had individual counties looking at fireworks bans. Right. And some did and some didn't. Right. And that is, and some people on the national level, not that I want to really confuse what we talk about, but on the national level, sometimes people say, hey, it's no fair for the federal government to decide what to be taught in schools in the country or right. in the counties. Uh, we have the same thing now looking at us here, don't we, with regards to the BOE and the DOE? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, what are we going to what 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 do you think is going to be up for up for consideration uh, that parents ought to really know about and study and then maybe even comment on with regards to, you know, um, I guess the 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 physics uh, we're are both our phones are ringing and that's yeah. <laughs> both are both the tables vibrant uh, on on the physics of things what things like I mentioned earlier l l let me go backwards before we go forwards uh, that the HSTA is talking about more money mm -hmm. uh, and they say well okay governor we help get you elected now it's time for more money um, what's happening this session uh, with regards to the teachers contracts. Uh, if they agree on anything between the governor and the teachers, then we'll have to vote on it mm -hmm. in the finance committee. Um, one of the things that, and, and I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday, uh, Governor Ige has promised a lot of things like Governor Abercrombie did. Mm -hmm. But I do think that Governor Ige might be a little bit better at explaining why we can't do them. So I'm thinking yeah. this should be a more interesting bargaining process than the last one. Well, you know, what always uh, comes to mind to me is a family that has a meeting on a Sunday evening and saying, here's where we are. Right. Okay, who's going to cool, cool? Who's going to give up water? Who's going to do right. something extra? Um, I, I would agree with you that that's it, at least on appearances that David Ige is going to be able to say to some people and explain, hey, we can't do that. Right. Because. Right. Uh, do you think that so far the examples that he's done are, are is he, does he appear to be more pragmatic? I that, think so, you know? yeah. How, you know, how key is that with regards to the minority caucus being able to work with the majority on these kind of issues? I think there's going to be a lot of areas for agreement um, there. there We always find ways. And and really, we all agree generally 80 percent of the time. Yeah. Um, we just tend to focus on that 20 percent we don't agree on. Yeah. But look, what the, look what's happening at the national level. Yeah. I mean, the president was giving a speech this morning about the budget and he keeps saying the Republicans as though they were from a foreign country. You know, what I mean, <laughs> right. so they, they're the bitter enemy instead of just more Americans that just think differently. Right, right. And I think at a certain point, you know, he's been trying this tactic and, and this obviously is national politics, but I feel like he's been trying this tactic for a while now, blaming yeah. the Republicans, blaming, but we're just getting more Republicans, really. Yeah, yeah. So um, at by some the way, point, he's going to shift. Let, let, let's step backwards a minute. I had the opportunity last week of having Governor Lingle on the air and talking about uh, this wonderful recognition that she's been given. And she's going to actually be the, I mean, the the she's going to run the, the state of Illinois, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you if the caucus has had a chance to look at that or wish her well, but obviously, um, hey, th there's going to be a lot of words out there. Here's somebody from Hawaii that thinks a little differently than the right. president. Right. Now, uh, when did you find out, by the way? Quite a while ago. No, no, yeah. not at all. <laughs> Very recently. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a, what a neat thing. She yeah. was so gracious in doing that. Yeah. And that just shows you. That unlike Hawaii, uh, the country is not at rest. I mean, here's a a, a state uh, that just elected a Republican governor. That's the the home state of the Democrat president. Yep. That's yep. Yeah, the, things you know. are changing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, if you'd like to join the conversation, it's easy. I'm getting an email, but remember, no email. Uh, Beth Chang Fukumoto is here. We're talking about the ledge. Uh, we did talk a little bit about e spoking. I'll talk about a little bit about the uh, excise tax. I'm going to talk about the budget and some other things, if you'd like us to. 296-KHNR, that's 296-5467. While Malin Moore hits us up with traffic. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer. Mike Buck on AM690. The answer. Okay, so Beth, uh, Beth Fukumoto Chang is in the house, and we're talking about uh, today is the day that the minority is going to, the minority caucus is going to uh, come up with the plan, their plan, their caucus package. Uh, and, you know, we were talking earlier, Beth, uh, that quite often things, at least nationally, maybe even here, are voted on D's and R's and not, not, not the issue. We have an awful lot that's going to be facing this legislature that is of interest to both parties, stuff that just needs to be done. Yeah. 
give us uh, a little, a couple of hints maybe of some of the stuff that's going to be in the package that you guys do, I think, 10 o'clock this morning? Yes, 10.15, 10 we're going to announce it. Um, okay. Well, we're, we're trying to focus a little bit more on job creation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if the rail moves forward, if the rail moves forward, one of yeah. the things that we're looking at is creating creating enterprise zones around each of the rail stations. Yeah, in other words, businesses. this is this sort of a expansion on the the what is being termed TOD, transit-oriented development? Yes. Not just housing. We're talking about businesses and everything else. And that's else. what we're talking about. Yeah, right now yeah. we're talking mostly about housing. That's what the mm -hmm. state's talking about. What we're saying we really should be talking about encouraging businesses too because sure. people are going to want to come off of a rail station and shop. You know, that's so true, especially if they're going to get picked up. Right. right. You know, if you live, uh, say, a mile away and you're going to commute right. and you live in a bedroom area or something, somebody's going to pick you up. Right. Wouldn't it be neat if they could pick you up at the shop across the street from the station, Let's, you know, buy dinner or, or have a snack or – or go shopping. Right. And we're investing so much money. This is really a good opportunity for us to look a little bit more at smart development um, mm -hmm. and walkable communities so that people can yeah. shop and eat and live all in the same place. One thing that I don't know if it's going to come up, but I would imagine it is, is that uh, Mayor Caldwell the, just over the weekend was talking about maybe having to take a look at downsizing some of the some of the goals of the stations and making them smaller and everything else. Wouldn't that make more space then available for somebody to say, come in and partner with the location. Right. It shouldn't be 100% on the state and on the city to build the infrastructure around mm -hmm. the rail station. I mean, if this works as they say it's going to work, which is a big if, mm -hmm. then people should naturally gravitate, right? There should be a customer base. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. One would think, if you can show me every afternoon that uh, 6,000 people are going to get off of this station, I'm going to open a hot dog stand. Right. You know, because, or something, right. you know. Right. Yeah, because I'm going to be an entrepreneur. But see, the thing is, how do you create incentives for entrepreneurs that are already looking to increase costs for minimum wage, right. increase costs of doing business? What's the incentive for me trying a new plan? Right. And, and that's why, you know, the biggest thing is to be able to provide tax breaks, lower GET, um, lower income taxes. And that's all included in this package that mm -hmm. would be offered to mm -hmm. uh, businesses. Uh, now, what does it take to do that? Obviously, uh, this is something that uh, would maybe impact uh, tax income so that anybody looking at that is going right. to say, well, it's going to decrease our income. We're not going to do that. We need to increase. Right. And and that's anytime you propose a tax decrease, right, it, it, or, or a taxation percentage decrease, in theory, it could reduce income. At some point, it should be bringing income up, though, because you're developing more businesses and diversifying. Yeah. Economy. If you do a bell curve, you're right. Yeah. In other words, um, by by incentivizing me, the small business guy, to open a new store, right. you're going to give me a break for whatever the thing is. Right. But it's not an open-ended break, right? In other words, I have to have a business plan. I have to make money. Right. Uh, it, you know, we, I saw today, I, I don't know if you heard, but just before uh, you got here, I was talking about uh, the the icon, the iconic uh, flagship store of Hilo Hatties on Nimitz Highway is now trying to lease the entire second floor to other people, which means mm -hmm. that this place is yeah. not doing the kind of yeah. numbers that it needs to be doing. Right. Uh, wouldn't there be a concern that, gee, if 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 a big guy is going to have a problem, how's a little guy going to make it? Absolutely. People yeah. are all starting to have problems. Mm -hmm. um, and, and despite the fact that our economy is up, sort of. <laughs> um, yeah, people, I was, I'm glad you, you know. said sort of. Because every time they come out with these numbers – telling us how great we're doing. I get calls from people that are saying, we're not, I'm not doing that great. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. And people are not feeling that it's a really good economy. Mm -hmm. um, you yeah. know, Beth, we, we, we had the announcement last week that this incredible amount of people came here. We had this incredible increase. But when you talk to people, and I'm sure your constituents, they're not reflecting their increase, the, the increase in tourism that we've had as an increase of their income. I mean, no. some you know, we, all we have is more people. Right. Right, right. And then the question becomes, where is it going? Um, I think we need to focus a little bit more on how we're taking care of the middle class. I'm not sure that, you know, your average middle class person is really feeling any mm -hmm. of these increases in the economy. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Okay, before we get in, for the few minutes leading up to the news, I, I do know that, and I want to talk about more about the package that you guys are coming okay. up with today. I know that a big, big concern is homelessness, that we, that, that we have this moment in time yeah. where we've sort of, I guess, denoted the number of homeless we have. Could you explain why that census is taken? And from what I understand, it has to do with what federal monies 
we can get. Who looks after that? I mean, like, for instance, if you were going to write a bill, would you have somebody in your staff say, let's go see if there's any federal money available for this? How does it work? Uh, in, in theory, the governor should be doing that. Mm-hmm. So um, it, you notice it in the state of the state speech of, for Governor Abcrombie. He put mm-hmm. uh, Senator Schatz in charge right. of looking for federal money. Um, and David Ige did announce somebody as well. So in theory, the governor is looking at that first because it's his departments that would be mm-hmm. doing the counts and all of that. Okay. So, however, it would have to either support or not support mm-hmm. a bill. If somebody comes up with a bill, it's nice, yeah. but it would need some federal uh, assistance then wouldn't they expect that somebody would come in and, and, and rewrite portions of it to make it fall in line with what the feds would likely give us something for? Right. And that's going to be probably if the governor finds money somewhere or his department mm-hmm. finds money somewhere, that's really where it would have to come from. Then the chair of human services mm-hmm. or usually the chair of human services would then go and rewrite the bill. There seems to be everybody in the nonprofit sphere is trying to say, well, we're going to give this and we're going to give that. Mm-hmm. And I do know that one of the big things that the ledge has to do that you have to do is to entertain these requests from this. Yes. I mean, these, I mean, hundreds of nonprofits yes. that are every barking at you all the time. Mm-hmm. How does it work? I mean, uh, uh, how does, how do you determine who gets what? The finance committee usually appoints somebody to go through all the different grant needs. Mm-hmm. It was Ty Cullen last year. Uh, Michael Mogul, I did it once upon a time. Um, but they basically have to come and talk to every finance committee member. Mm-hmm. So when you're on finance, you have a lot of those meetings. Um, and, and the better ones, the people that are more used to doing this, usually mm-hmm. talk to every single member. Yeah, I think that's pretty key. Isn't it? Yeah. And, and, I, and I guess that if you, if you can do something that, that satisfies all the stakeholders, that you're likely to have it pass. Right. You know, uh, th- that being said, uh, back back to the homeless thing, there's, I know a, a move underfoot, and I don't know if it's a county or state level, uh, to sometimes maybe approve or not turn so critical an eye on people that are sleeping in automobiles. I mean, I don't know if you've ever tried to sleep in a car mm. every night, but I, I think it'd probably be pretty tough. Oh, yeah. But what, uh, what if, is that a state, uh, a state bill that you're looking at? Do you know? I have not seen a state mm-hmm. bill like that yet. I'm sure we will. We always have the parking lot bills, return mm-hmm. to home, all of those. So I'm sure it it seems that. that if we can find a common ground, uh, that if cars were not allowed to stay someplace during the day and create a village of abandoned vehicles, right. that if somebody could go somewhere where there was a place where they could either get electricity or, or, or a bathroom or something, that that might be a, a stopgap in between building affordable housing and picking up people and sit lie loss. Right. And when, when you go cross country, right, I sit at all these KOAs, right? Yeah. Um, and campgrounds of America. And, you know, you hook up, there's a shower there, there's yeah. all of that. Certainly, if we could have something like that, that would be wonderful, I would think. Yeah. Well, one, one thing it would provide with security. Yeah. Because I do know that some, I, I don't know, of course, I'm a big guy. I, I couldn't sleep in a car. I mean, you know, you try, you can nod off. Right. I, how can you, you know, you got to stretch out and all of this stuff. But what about a guy that, uh, you know, a, a, a couple with couple, three kids and, and a dog. How do you do that? It's just right. pretty tough. Yeah. Okay. So, however, uh, doesn't the groundwork have to be laid that would that be on a state piece of property? Would it be on a city piece of property? Who's going to pay the bills? Who's going to put in the plumbing? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it would probably end up being on a state piece of property. And that's where we've run into problems in the past, specifically if you're going to allow people on um, that you know are using drugs or alcohol, yeah, yeah. Um, and whether or not you're going to say, no, you guys have to stay out. I did hear That's another safe. thing, too, that this has happened. I, I'm not sure whether it was Phoenix um, or Tucson or is one of those. It was in Arizona. I'm not sure if Joe's place, but another part of Arizona, where the, the state or the city or the county was held liable mm-hmm. for a, um, a a killing that happened in this place yeah. by just saying, well, you provided a place for this to be. That means that you didn't provide enough security so you're liable right which is why we've never moved forward with any of the parking lot or uh like a protected tent area mm-hmm. which we talked about before we've never moved forward because of the liability issues yeah and it's a, now however there's some that are saying well let's take a look at what about the stairway to heaven what about sacred falls uh-huh. same thing right yes. what happens is somebody gets hurt somebody sues everybody loses right what about you know one more fast question, even though it's not homelessness. Uh, we're going to go to the news here, but what about tort reform? Everybody talks about it. It doesn't seem to be going forward. <laughs> Is there going to be another attempt 
in, in your mind this year to take a look at some form of, of revisiting uh, tort reform like Texas has? No, yeah. I <laughs> wow. Honestly, I'm gonna yeah. say no. Most of our most we have a lot of attorneys that are mm. personal injury attorneys sure. in, the, in the legislature, and they're in charge, and they're not gonna move anything like that. Um, you yeah, know, it's kind of sad. In some it, respects, it is yeah. sad, and I just I've I've not seen any push in the last couple of years to do that. You know, Beth, for I've been doing this for a long time. Mm-hmm. I've never begrudged anybody that could prove somebody's liability or somebody's fault. For getting something. Nobody right. wants to see somebody lose a limb or a life right. or anything. But the frivolous lawsuits that end up costing yeah. taxpayers money, that's where you have to draw the line. Yeah. Couldn't there be a committee? Couldn't we say, well, we're not going to have a court reform, tort reform, but we're going to have a committee. And if you don't pass this committee's muster, you're not going to be able to sue this guy. Yeah, we've actually had, you know, some medical courts and we've talked yeah. about that. You know, and I've seen bills like that, but they never get anywhere. Um, I, Just and have, I don't we have, any... have, a, have a new deal. Go ask uncle. If uncle says yes, you can sue. If not, you can't right. sue. And well, you know, California has, a, for as liberal of a state as California is, they actually have some decent tort laws yeah. um, that I think really would work here in Hawaii, but still no movement. Somebody pointed out to me that, that spends a lot of time in Sacramento, in California, saying, you know, uh, they didn't want to have it, but it was a matter of them going under if they didn't. If they didn't stop some of these, right. uh, I'm going to sue everybody inside. And it all happened. It started in Hollywood. Because if you're not being sued or suing somebody in Hollywood, you're not doing it right. You know? <laughs> hey, it's 8.30. Time for our 8.30 report. Uh, Beth Chang, Fukumoto, and Fukumoto Chang is in the house. And we're talking about the ledge. And when we come back, we're going to get more specific about the uh, House Republican Caucus announcing their 2015 Legislative Caucus Package today. That's going to happen at 10.15. But right now, it's 8.31. Here's our news director, Chaz Ontai. Good morning. This is Mike Buck on AM 690, The Answer. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's all Gangnam style. In the house, Beth Fukumoto Chang, our special guest. is Legislative Monday in more ways than one. As we hear from the minority party, what's going on? What's going on is at 10.15 this morning, uh, they're going to release their, their package. And, and, and I, I don't want to anticipate that we're talking about partisan politics. But in, in actual fact, Beth, I'm guessing that a good deal of what's being introduced at the, at, by the caucus today is not partisan politics. Yeah, no, a lot of the stuff that we're introducing is actually, you know, things that I think the majority could really get on board with. Um, certainly some of the things have always been more favorable with Republicans, for example, mm-hmm. recall and yeah. referendum. All those things are going to be in there requiring a super majority to pass taxes. That's in there. Mm-hmm. Those tend to be slightly more partisan. Democrats mm-hmm. don't like those. Um, but we have a bill. Uh, we were talking about jobs earlier. We have a bill to help the cottage food industry. So people mm-hmm. who are making foods in their home that can't find a certified kitchen so that they can sell their goods would have yeah. an alternative certification process for their home kitchen. Gotcha. Now that would entail probably the creation of maybe some more observers or inspectors right. to right. go out and say that, okay, best monopoles. Okay, best right. making monopoles at home, right. but she passes muster. Right. She's using the right kitchen, the right sanitary things, right. Uh, whatever, whatever, right? Right, yeah. right. So stuff like that, you know, just small changes like that. You know, Democrats have suggested things like that in the past, so mm-hmm. I don't know that there's a huge problem. Like I said, we're also doing something to get more of the TAT to go specifically towards infrastructure. That's also in there. One of the big ideas that one of our freshmen actually came yeah. up with is to bring back the super ferry, um, mm-hmm. but to bring it back um, by essentially having the state do the EIS ahead of time so a private yeah. business doesn't have to come in um, and do the EIS. You know, so. I think that the super ferry is a, is a really good example of when you take something that conceptually is a good idea and then you politicize it, right. it, it became a problem. Even, I think, especially on our neighbor islands, a lot of Democrats were saying, you know, oh, we yeah. want to have our cake and eat it too. Yeah. So why can't we make this thing work? Right, right. And the biggest the biggest barrier even back when we had a super ferry was the environmental impact statement. Sure. We kept trying to skip it, right? The business right. didn't necessarily want to pay for it. Um, and so what we're saying is if we if we have the state go through, do its due diligence ahead of time, then a private company can come in um, mm. and it's already been done, right? Yeah. As long as they fit the specifications. I want to go back to something we were talking about earlier. And when we talk about rail uh, and, the, and the, the desired extension of the GE tax surcharge uh-huh. indefinitely, 
Let's talk about ultimately what goes on at the state level, talking about the rail, because from what I understand, and, and, I, and you really should explain this to me and, and to our audience, is that should the city default in any of its obligations to this project, financially or otherwise, that the fallback is the state? Huh. That's, you know, that's a great question. I'm not sure specifically what the answer is. I would say, you know, almost always yes. <laughs> well, I mean, if you take, you, yeah. you mentioned earlier California. Right. Uh, if you take, uh, you know, suburban Los Angeles, San Francisco, they were the ones on the, right. on the brink of bankruptcy. Right. So a guy living in Stockton or, or Mo, you know, on the, in the Mojave Desert or something, what does he care? Well, he cares because his, his, everybody, and eventually everybody's got to Right, pay, yeah. right. So, and, and I, so I would say yes. I don't know what the specific language is um, in any of the agreements, but I'm sure that that is the case. Yeah. yeah. I, and I think that what we really need to do, I was so pleased. Uh, to hear that, for instance, the city the other day figured out a way to streamline the drivers going down there taking their tests, right? Yes. From what I understand, uh, the website, the state website, is streamlined to a point where people that are interested now, it's going to be a little bit easier to follow things. Yes. You know, um, are you going to do something? I know that you're techie. <laughs> uh, are, are, are some of the Republican minority going to do something about making their pages links to things that they want people to know more about? Isn't that isn't that the coming deal now? Somebody saying, "Okay, go to Beth's page because she's passionate about this bill, and right. here's the reasons why." I go find out more over here. Yeah, you know, I think we need to get better at that as a caucus. Is one of the things when I became minority leader, I told all the members, "This is what I really want to improve." So mm. we've already done some email blasts, mm. um, specifically at the state of the state. We came out with like. 10 questions that people should still be asking. Mm -hmm. um, so anybody that wants to get on that email list should just go ahead and email me. Sure. It's repfukumoto at capital.hawaii.gov. Repfukumoto at, at capital, capital with an O. With an O, yeah. Dot Hawaii.gov. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I tried it the other day. It bounced. <laughs> Duh. You know, and, and by the way, spell check doesn't get that because it's a No, word. it doesn't. <laughs> and it happens to people all the yeah, time. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that we, we really need to know uh, we hear about all of these things, these these things like a pop up store. Yep. Uh, your generation and the one right after you is so comfortable with that, but my generation's not. Right. You know, right, right. and 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 slowly but surely, I've gone to texting more than just a K <laughs> or a Y or an N. Right. I'm actually <laughs> texting. Uh, isn't it? Isn't this something that it, not only is it moving at the speed of light, but should help you and others? to get response from people quicker because it's easier? I think so. I think it's yeah. more a matter of, um, you know, just finding the time in the day. It's even yeah. changing, you know, like social media, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm having to change my own perspectives on making sure that I'm always checking my Twitter and sending things out. Yeah. You know, I realized, oh, these 10 questions we came up, seven questions we came up with, I never sent it out via Twitter. So a yeah. bunch of people didn't see it that normally would have. So uh, it's still a learning curve for me. I think that one of the stumbling blocks are, is the terminology. I mean, I know a lot of people that say, Twi ah, what's that Twitter stuff? I don't know right. what that is. Right. Uh, it, it, maybe it's just because of the word. Maybe could the word be. makes you think it's it's not significant because it's it's Twitter. Right, you know? right, right. It could be. Or I'll Google. say I, that's where I get my news, though. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, it but it depends on the generation, right? That's right, where right. If, if I need to know something right now, I'm going to check Twitter. I need to know that people, though, would then go ahead and check additional sources. Because right. just because it's on the Internet, doesn't mean it's cast right. in, in in concrete. Right. Yeah, yeah, well, and that's what's been good is a lot of like like AP has gotten very good at just putting their stories up on Twitter first. Mm -hmm. So if you want it first, it's going to be up on Twitter first. Right. And that's what I've gotten used to. But certainly you got to check the source. Yeah. And by the way, uh, it's so simple to become it, to become uh, a, a follower. Oh, I mean, yeah. You know, you just follow. Yep. Uh, there are some people, though, and I'm one of them, that I have a tough time differentiating between all of these notices that I get all day long. I mean, <laughs> uh, when I'm on the air, right. I have to turn these devices off because they never stop. Right, right, right. Well, yeah. my mom just started Facebook and she's actually, right. you know, a, my, an avid Facebooker. Mm -hmm. um, but she, I, for the first probably month, just kept asking me and my sister, did you see this happen? Did you see this happen? Mm -hmm. What is this? You know, just because there's so much information mm -hmm. uh, and you have to get used to, I think, I have an automatic screen and filter, right? So there's right. some things that I just know not to read, but my mom was reading everything. Yeah, everything. So. yeah I, I used to do yeah. that too. But I think the other problem is that once something gets up and gets running, yeah, it they they feel they got to monetize it. So yeah. that like Facebook, to me now Facebook is a chore. 
Yes. It, it used to be I really enjoyed it because in 10 minutes I could really reach out and right. and connect with a lot of things. But now I have to different. Why is, is Beth sending me something about a new dog food? Right. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, and it seems like then we're always, we're, we're waiting for the next darling. Yeah. But social media is here to stay, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Different forms, but it's here to stay. Okay. That was a setup because I do know that every single year we take a long look at the, the amount of revenue that theoretically goes out of states that are having their uh, constituents and their residents shop online yeah. and avoid taxes. And I do know that that's a big thing. Is there anything that you know specifically that's looking at that? It comes up all the time, but it never seems to go very far. It's almost certainly coming up this mm. year. Um, whether or not it's going to pass, I don't know. We, we've run into problems in the past because the Senate basically wants to pass a different version of the mm. tax than we do. Um, on the house side, I've been against it. I most of my community does shop online, but they shop online because they're buying things that they can't get in Hawaii. That would be the differentiation mark for me, right? You know, and it seems, and I've talked to a lot of retailers because that's where my background is, and a lot of them say, you know, when when a TV has fifteen models, and you and you right. know you you, you want to carry more than just that one brand, you can't carry all fifteen, right? And yet, somebody that wants that left-handed one is going to need is going to buy it online. Yeah. You can't get it. And we need to make it a little bit easier for businesses to do business in store. Like Best Buy, for example, is doing a great job. Best Buy has a price match policy. They'll price match you on Amazon. So mm -hmm. you go in there, and if you have seen it cheaper on Amazon, they will give you that price. But yeah. you get it right away, which is great. Yeah, but you know the thing that you do worry about though is that it seems like in and. I went by the Comp USA uh, building the other day, yeah, and it's gone. Oh, yeah. I mean, this just shows you that something misses. They move out. That building, which should have been yeah. there for fifty or sixty years, is ashes. Yeah, especially yeah. considering we really need the the yeah. the buildings, right? Yeah. The the <laughs> land space, but we just make no use of it after it. But yeah, something else is going to go up there. I hope they build it so it can be removed. In the <laughs> uh, we got more to come, including your opportunity to join us. Uh, 296 Kate Sinar is the number. Uh, today at 1015, the Minority Caucus is going to come up with their platform, uh, their, their, list, their laundry list this morning. And we're learning a little bit about it and more to come uh, right after this short little break. Mike Buck, all Honolulu, all the time. On AM 690, the answer. Okay, we're about an hour and a half away from the presentation of the package by the Republican uh, Minority Caucus today. And we're so lucky we're spending a little time with uh, Beth Fukumoto about that because it's, it's, it's the moment that's going to give the other guys sort of a glimpse of what we're going to be able to work on together and, and, and what might be a bit of a stumbling block. Um, one of the things that we always talk about is the budget and and. I do know that that a lot of what the caucus is going to be doing uh, does need to get monetized at maybe at the expense of others. What tricks are you going to do this year hmm. to maybe make it possible to reach out a little bit more and get more agreement on things that are Hawaii issues rather than party issues? You know, I, I we are always trying to reach out. I don't know that we're going to do any more than we did last year because I feel like we did a lot last year, too. Um, but certainly do the same thing to just mm -hmm. make sure that we can support uh, Democrat initiatives whenever, you know, they're there. We have already gotten some hearings for our initiatives, two bills uh, that we have to audit the PUC, um, which mm -hmm. I think could potentially decrease the rate of electricity, um, that are already getting heard. So Democrats there, are helping. There, There is a big thing, Beth. Let's touch on that for just a minute on on what's going on with with uh, with Hawaiian Electric. Yeah. Here on Oahu, because there are a lot of people saying, why is this big company coming in here if it's not to make money? They're not right. coming in here to be nice guys. <laughs> no. And now they're telling us we're going to save money. Um, at what point in time uh, does the state, uh, through the PUC, take a look at what's happening in each county? You know, we should be doing, the PUC should be doing that already. And that's mm -hmm. why we're suggesting an audit. They really should already be doing that. Granted, they have somebody else in charge, um, a guy from Milani, actually. Yeah. Um but I think that doesn't change that the structure of the PUC has caused us problems for a while and we need to pay closer attention to how things are being run. You know, one thing that people do have to understand, when we have, quote, a monopoly, mm -hmm. it's because it's it would be very difficult to have two people supplying this electricity. Right. 
two sets of poles, two sets right. of wires, whose wires are you on? Right. But, uh, but that there is this group, this watchdog group called the PUC, right. that looks over their shoulders to make sure they're not gouging us. Right, and yet... Which is a nice way of saying right. ripping us off. Right, but yeah. we all feel ripped off. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> that's where we need to say, okay, PUC, are you doing your job? Because that's your yeah. one job. Yeah. Well, there was this big bottleneck, and I'm not sure how it's going. Because I know that the one of the things that you guys are, are going to be looking at today is is uh, increasing and extending and relooking at uh, credits for alternative energy uh, mm-hmm. for people to put PV or to do this thing. Right. But the bottleneck is all right. They all want to put up PV, PV but the power company saying they can't. Oh, right. I mean, right now, to be honest, I don't know that I want to incentivize anybody else to put PV on their roof because they can't get it hooked up to the grid. They're just spending yeah. more money for no return. Um, one of the things that we're trying to incentivize instead is to uh, a home battery storage system mm-hmm. so people can bypass uh, HECO, essentially. You know, it is a lot more likely that in the, in the immediate foreseeable future that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I, I believe it can be done now. Mm-hmm. But it's extremely cost prohibitive. Yes. In other words, you could be you'd be making a statement, but it would be costing you a lot right. of money. Right. But after right. a while, you know, you can buy them. Uh, I, I'm 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 looking at look at the number of things, for instance, that we used to automatically go buy batteries for. Yeah. Okay. Now you can get a solar powered keyboard. Right. You can get a solar powered flashlight. Right. So they're trying to think, hey, we don't need you batteries. So therefore, right. batteries are saying, okay, well, we'll just be so cheap you can't not need us. <laughs> That's and true. And isn't that isn't that going to be the case on these eventually right. these photovoltaic systems with these lithium batteries of some kind. Well, in this case, you know, I think when you first looked at photo- photovoltaic, when this legislature first put in the tax credits, people would have said, oh, but it's already cost pro- prohibitive. They mm-hmm. would have said that, but the tax credits helped the industry make it cheaper mm-hmm. and find ways to make it cheaper. And now it's more affordable. And I think the same thing could be done with batteries. Yeah. That, and that's an interesting thing. And certainly something we all hope at. All right. Now, how much of that thinking, though, Mm -hmm. is attached to the fact that oil is down and it's in the 40s? You (laughs) know, I mean, you know, and and I remember when it was 120. Right. So, I mean. Oh, yeah. Now is a terrible time to be trying to talk about clean energy because nobody's thinking about it. Um, But I think everybody knows, you know, I mean. My dad paid two fifty at Costco the other day yeah. for gas, um, and but he even he said it's going to go back up. He knows that. Let, let me tell you the 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 um, the false thinking that goes into that. My wife and I were driving by. We were at Costco. I mean, uh-huh. at Home Depot the other day, uh-huh. and driving up Alacava or whatever the street is. There's this big line of traffic on the street. Oh yeah, waiting to turn <laughs> in, and they're not going to get in, but they still stay there. Right. So right, now right. I'm in this traffic jam for people trying to save, and you know what? Uh, my wife pointed this out. We've pointed this out a million times. Let's say you save 20 cents a gallon. Twenty. Let's say you save 20 cents a gallon right. and you got a 20-gallon tank. You're going to save oh, yeah. four bucks. To wait in traffic forever. For, yeah. yeah, and and yeah. to really get people at, at their very edge. Yeah. But, that's your Hawaii Kai people, though. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> in and, Milani, yeah, yeah. sometimes we have no line. Yeah, and that's now the, other, now the other side of that coin is, let's talk about the division for a minute. Uh-huh. The divisiveness of the rail pro and anti if you saw the the yes. thing in a white pole uh my neck of the woods we don't want anything to do with the <laughs> yes. rail your neck of the woods is bring it on yes yes and we have that in our caucus right mm-hmm. Cynthia Thielen and Jean Ward um have communities that don't like the rail um but the you know the the republican the republican strongholds are moving more and more out to the west side and to central Oahu so um we're getting more and more uh people that understand yeah. the need for the rail yeah. By the way, uh, we don't usually do email, but I, I must do this one so that other people don't make the same assumption. One lady says, oh, my God, Mike, when was the last time you went to CompUSA? It's been closed for years. The site's now <laughs> undergoing construction. Well, we knew all about it being closed, right. but it was it was a car place. And, it was, and now right. it's being demolished because it was this beautiful, big retail destination yep. that somebody should be in. But for some reason they're not. So yeah. some somebody else is always going to try. Yeah. Let's let's zero in on uh, another very important uh, uh, collaboration that's necessary, and that's in the redevelopment of the waterfront district, Kakaako. Yeah. I mean, all these plans. It's 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 city, but it's state. Yes. It's everybody. Yes, it's actually got a lot to do with the state now um, because it falls under HCDA, which has some special covenants and and laws, but. Um, you know, I the legislature was all for it. Governor Ige has mm. been all for it. Um, there have been some limits put on it now, um, yep. certain heights and stuff like that. Um, but 
the limits that were pushed last year were sort of pared down by the end of session. Initially, it was, you know, there's got to be a certain distance between buildings. And it, right. you know, it was very, very micromanaging yeah. of Kakako. Um, now we just said, okay, well, don't go above a certain height. So You know, I was in uh, Ala Moana, the Ala Moana building the other day. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking down on the construction going on in the Ala Moana Center. It's, yeah. It really is great to see so many people working all of this. Yes. But, you know, these climbing cranes that are all over the place, we got to remember that they're building buildings that won't come down. Right. That, you know, before we build them, we ought to make sure that everybody's in, in agreement. Uh, isn't there a good way to incentivize that uh, to, to demand, all right, if you build that over there, mm-hmm. you got to go somewhere else and you got to build some affordable. Stuff. Yes. You yes. Know, it, it, it may not be in the same district. Right. You can't expect the mixed use. You can't expect a multi-zillion dollar condo next to a low-cost yeah. housing, right? Well, you know, that's already ha- happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kakako does have a mixture of um, high-end luxury condos and affordable housing because they did make a requirement that they needed to keep it in the same yeah. area. Uh, and that being said, that's going to be some of the interesting stuff that's coming up. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're just about an hour and 15 minutes away uh, from the big, from the big reveal. And, and I know that... There, there are probably going to be some uh, some surprises, but what would you say that uh, that you think if it were up to you to say one thing that was the most important for the other side to to get in, involved in, what would it be? Mm, that's a great that question. A hard one? If there's one bill that I wanted to pass, what would it be? Uh, it would be lowering the cost of energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a number of energy bills that we have out there, and I, you know, I really would like to see us work hand in hand because everybody's constituents are feeling how much it costs. Okay, what I was hoping that might partially come into it is my dear friend Cynthia Thielen has been such a champion uh-huh. for hemp in the past. <laughs> yes. It looks like there is some more agreement mm-hmm. that, you know what, there is part of that industry is a good, healthy, vibrant industry that might bring us a lot of money yep. and save us some. Yep, yep. I mean, are there any, is there anything to push that for? I know that, that it, the flag's flying. Right. So at least right, right. at least it was a step in the right direction. But, but isn't that neat in, in many respects, Beth, to see someone that has been so dogmatic and pragmatic about something yes. and refusing to yes. give up on something for a long time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, it's wonderful. We got to sit with her last year when the governor signed her bill and um it it is wonderful to see her successful. But those are the kinds of things we sometimes yeah. don't put in the package because sure. it's so important to an individual member. Yeah. They want to have complete ownership. So All right. Well at ten fifteen, uh you're going to hear some of the things that we're talking about, and then I'm sure we'll be talking about some of them tomorrow. But thanks so much for coming in today. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank and you. if people want to know more, you said earlier, they can go to Rep Fukumoto uh-huh. at capital.hawaii.gov and find out more. And then, and, and by the way, uh, we, we will give you a heads up starting next week where you can put in your comments, not just to your own. But let's say that you find something, you're in East Honolulu and something's going on in, in Best District. You can still, uh, input is input, right? Yeah. Okay. 